Psalm 127 is one that we're familiar with, but one that we don't really believe a lot of the time. And I was just thinking about it on the way here. A lot of times when we talk about anxiety, we go to Matthew chapter 6, and that is for very good reason. Matthew chapter 6 should put to bed our anxieties once and for all. Matthew chapter 6 is Jesus's um, do not worry, seek first the kingdom, the birds of the air, that whole discussion. But another great anxiety passage that we should, we should simmer on a little bit more is Psalm 127. And we're all familiar with it. Unless Yahweh builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless Yahweh guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors, for he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. I'll pause there. What is it that makes you anxious? What is it that makes me anxious? Anybody have one that they're willing to share? Disobedience. Disobedience. Amen. I should Amen. do this, but I'm going to snatch a glance at my brokerage account or my parcels tracking. I'm going to check the tracking. Uh, <laughs> check the, yeah, the package progress. Uh-huh. Yeah. Disobedience. Finances. Finances. Anybody else? What stresses you? People. People. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So... The Psalm 127, and so when it comes to, to heart issues like our disobedience, that, amen, that is, that's, to me, is kind of a different category, but in the same, at the same time, it's the same category too, right? It's just a different house. It's a spiritual house. Who's going to build the house of your salvation, of your heart? That's the work that Christ has to do in you. So that doesn't get us out of repenting of our sin, right? That doesn't get us out of conviction. If we're convicted of our disobedience, we should be. If we're bothered by our disobedience, we should be. We need to repent. But if we're tied up in anxiety over it, because, oh, I failed again, I'm such a bad Christian, that's where you say, wait, no, the Lord's building this house. I'm part of Jesus' church. And who builds Jesus' church? Jesus does. He who began the good work in me will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. So even there in the spiritual realm, we have comfort in Christ. Not comfort that gets us out of repentance, not comfort that, that makes us comfortable in sin, but comfort that gives us the joy of being freed and forgiven from our sin. I'm thinking more in terms of the, the, the here and now, the this world stressors, the natural stressors, like finances, or even to some extent people. It depends on what you mean by that, right? That's kind of both. That can be a natural stressor and a, a supernatural stressor where both things apply. But... God's the one who builds the house. Do we really believe that? The things that stress me out, and it, it applies in so many different areas of life, like I'm not going to get enough time with my kids. I haven't seen my kids enough. Or um, I'm just tired. I need more rest. A mom who's just exhausted, who, who the house is falling apart, and I can't even keep the kids under control, and I, I don't feel well, and everything's just terrible. Or... Um, finances, right? I don't have enough money. How are we going to make it? I mean, I know the Lord's provided so far, but how are we? Doesn't necess- In one way, it makes it easier. And in another way, that old man still comes back up and says, yeah, well, you know what? He's not going to be faithful this time. <laughs> At the end of the day, whatever the thing is that we're stressed about, drive, drive down to that. Drive down to that lowest level of your heart. What, what is the issue for me? Why am I not joyful right now? I am working another 55-hour week, and I am not happy about that. Why? Because I need rest, or because I need to invest in my family, or because I need more time in Scripture, or fill in the blank. Does God know that? Yes. Yes. If my understanding of my needs is correct, is God just going to leave me there? Floundering without what I need? No. No. God sees me. He knows my needs. He will provide for my needs. And if I am praying and listening to him, he's not just going to leave me stuck. Yeah, I know you're not able to be the dad that I want you to be, but I don't care. I want you to just be stuck there. That's, That's not how God works. If the Lord wanted me to be somewhere else, he would put me somewhere else. Amen. 
So I can have joy in trusting that he's going to build the house. If the, the, if I, if I'm a exhausted mom and I can't keep the house under control and there's just, it's all so much and I can't do it all. And I feel stressed because this isn't the mom I was supposed to be. Does God see you? Does God know you where you are at? Will God give you the grace for where you are at? If, if there's something you're convicted of, I'm not the mom I'm supposed to be because I'm being lazy and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm surfing Pinterest instead of investing in my children. Okay, that's one thing. Repent of that, right? But if I'm just, I'm not living up to the Instagram motherhood thing where I'm supposed to be, you know, jogging every morning and making protein smoothies for the family three times a day and my house is supposed to look like a picture from Better Homes and Gardens. God didn't say you were supposed to. Sometimes God lets his children go through periods where you're laid up and you're just not accomplishing much. And this should make a shout because guess what? Lord, I can barely put one single brick on this wall today. I crawled out of bed this morning, shuffled over to the brick pile, and the whole day has been (laughs) trying to get one more brick on this house. And the Lord says, yep. But guess what I'm doing while you sleep? I'm building the house. That's what he does. We can't do it. We can't manufacture it. And if all our focus is on is the one little brick that I was trying to get on the wall and then I dropped it halfway through the day and it shattered, (laughs) we won't have joy. But if our heart is resting in the fact that he's the one who builds the house and he says it is vain for you to rise up early and to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors because I give to my beloved even in their sleep. Then who are we? Why don't I have joy? But I'm not going to get enough time with my kids. He knows. And he, in his sovereign mercy, can give me five minutes with my child that changes that child's life. Where I could spend a week with that child in my own flesh and never get anywhere. Because it's God who builds the house. So whatever it is that we're worried about, we can surrender to him. Not just can, we must surrender to him and trust him to build the house and let our anxieties rest. Just go to sleep and let him build the house. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. What does that have to do with the first half of the psalm? I don't know entirely, but I do think it's quite a powerful pair because that is a promise that you have to take on faith. Because when your quiver is being filled, that's a very difficult process. When you've got a house full of tiny arrows that don't yet have an arrowhead, they don't yet have fletching, they're basically just sticks at this point, right? And you just got sticks all over the house. This is a promise that we're, right, yes, they're not even straight. And so you're trying to straighten them. You're trying to sharpen them. You're trying to do all this stuff. And ultimately, we're trusting in the promise. God is the one who builds the house. God is the one who fills the quiver. God is the one who gets these things done. So if you can't get it done, then shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In in your weakness, may his strength be shown all the more. And just rest. And if all you can get done today is, I, I moved a brick a couple of feet. Okay, that's fine. Just do what God gave you to do. Keep on moving bricks and keep on praising the one who's actually bringing things to pass. Our trust is not in ourselves, our ability, our ability to make sense of things. Our trust is in the Lord and his ability to bring things to pass. And there's joy there. Trust the Lord to build the house. Believe Psalm 127. Don't just sing it. Preach it to yourself. God builds the house so I don't have to worry. I am just, all I have to be concerned about is faithfulness. I just want to obey Jesus today, please Jesus today. And if all Jesus gave me to do today is to lay on the couch and get the kids fed, then I'm going to do that and I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to wait and watch for the harvest. If all Jesus gave me to do today is change a flat tire, work for 15 hours, come home and put kids to bed, go to sleep so I can wake up and do it again, then I'm going to trust him and I'm going to look for a harvest because that's what God does.